1977, history has been written by some of the biggest, toughest, and most powerful men from around the globe. And once again, an athlete will record his name alongside those legends by surviving unbelievably grueling and punishing challenges of human strength. Will this year's script include a fourth title for Lithuania Zydrunas Zaviskas, arguably the greatest ever? Will it be American Brian Shaw becoming champion for a second time and perhaps ushering in an era of dominance? Or will it be somebody else emerging to steal the show and lift the most prestigious trophy in the sport? It's the World's Strongest Man Final, and it's next. Sanya, China, the southernmost city on the tropical island of Hainan, is the host for the 36th edition of the Commerce World's Strongest Man Final. We get things underway at Sanya's Serenity Marina, the first of six distinct challenges. Facing the 10 finalists is the frame carry. Yeah, Brent, the strongmen are going to need to carry a pair of steel girders bolted together across a course that measures 30 meters. The 825 pound weight will be like having a full grown black bear in each hand, so obviously grip strength is going to be a factor. Now heat one. Robert Oberst from Hanford, California is the only rookie in the field. The 28 year old is 6'8", 400 pounds. 28 year old Johannes Harsho is a five time winner of Sweden's strongest man. He checks in 6'3", 335. 34-year-old Terry Hollins of England Terry in his eighth Hollins. consecutive World's Strongest Man final. He finished third in 07 and 2011. Mike Burke of Aurora, Colorado, first-time finalist. The 39-year-old framing contractor is 6'6", 350. And Mike Jenkins, an old lineman at James Madison University once upon a time, 6'6", 400. He should contend for the title. Here we go in the frame carry as the final begins. A slow start, but Robert Oberst at the top and Johannes Arsho not getting very far at all. But Jenkins, nice transition. That's very important over such a short course. Terry Hollins had the early lead, but look at Jenkins strong to the finish. And Jenkins wins the heat. 20.14, Burke second. You have to get the frame all the way across. And how about Arsho and Oberst up at the top? They barely even left the line. Now remember. Weight is not an issue for these guys, but because of those thin handles, Brent, it can sometimes be like carrying 800 pounds on the edge of a knife. Over still battling down there. You mentioned Arsho never left the line. Hollins in lane three did get it across finally, the entire frame. Ten. And now Oberst has 10 more seconds to get a few more meters. No question, Robert is strong enough to carry him, but he saw him looking at his hands there. He's got some big old meat paws, but that weight there and down on such a small surface is really painful. So Mike Jenkins, the story here in Heat 1, 20.14 for man who finished fifth at the world's strongest man last year. And Mike Burke, 21.30 finishes in second place in the opening heat. Now, Brent, that was a ridiculous performance. Mike Jenkins weighs 400 pounds, so he's basically running with the equivalent of his body weight in each of his hands. 825 pounds, 30 meters, just over 20 seconds. Unbelievable. Heat two, 34-year-old Misha Kokliya finished third in 2010. But the Russian comes in here a little beaten up with pectoral and tricep injuries. Hathor Bjornsson is the youngest finalist to just 24 years old, the Icelandic giant. Six foot nine, 397. Lithuania's Vitotis Lalas, the runner up a year ago, is the shortest and lightest of the 10 finalists at 5'10, 313. His countryman, Zydrunas Zaviskis, is already a legend in strength athletics. The 38 year old has won this competition three times. And 6'8, 415 pounder from Fort Lupton, Colorado, Brian Shaw, 31 years old, won the title in 2011. And along with Zaviskas, the co-favorite here in Sanya. Right out of the gate, Brent Brian Shaw off to a great start. See, Misha Kaplai above the top, struggling already, the first to drop his apparatus. Bjornsson looking very strong yes. as the two leaders in this heat taking their time. A lot of athleticism with this event. See Brian Shaw taking his time. Remember how helpful a good transition was for Mike Jenkins, but Shaw having that bicep surgery a year ago may be impeding his grip strength, so he wanted to make sure he had some extra chalk on his hands to be able to deal with those thin handles. 
Hafthor Bjornsson trying to get to the finish. Look at the effort by Bjornsson, and he's across. You see how happy Big he is, and I would be too if I just set down something that weighed 825 pounds. Bjornsson wins the heat and finishes fourth overall. Notice the difference, Brent, between this group and the last group. One of the limiting factors in this event is grip strength, and it certainly seemed to affect this group more so than the last. And the time limit is one minute, and Brian Shaw unable to get it across the line. Bjornsson, the heat winner, and fourth overall, 43.47 his time. Now the race within the race, the two favorites here, Zaviskas and Shaw. Zaviskas finishes sixth here in the frame carry, one place behind the American Brian Shaw. So with a time of 20.14 seconds, the frame carry goes to Mike Jenkins. His countryman Mike Burke was second, Terry Hollins third, in fourth half for Bjornsson. Brian Shaw led the way for the men who were measured for distance and finished fifth. You can add pretty severe blistering to Misha Koklyev's long list of injuries, and the Russian was forced to withdraw from the competition. Sanya, China is a city that hosts world-class sporting events like the Volvo Ocean Race throughout the year. Add the Commerce World's Strongest Man to that list. The World's Strongest Man final rolls on with a second of six events, and it's one of our classics, the truck pull. Brent, with a yacht resting on a flatbed of an 18-wheeler, the athletes will need to pull over 35,000 pounds. It's going to require some serious leg drive, bicep, and shoulder power, and of course, a willingness to endure some serious pain to complete the 25-meter course. First up, Vitotis Lalas, the Lithuanian's final, didn't get off to the start. He had probably pictured. He finished seventh in the first event. Lawless there using those big powerful arms and leg drive to get the truck moving. Pretty good start. Remember, these athletes don't want to expend too much energy early on. They've got to save some for the finish. It's virtually a flat course, but you mentioned 35,000 pounds. Look at those guns. You see a little bit of a bobble there, but look at the forward body lean of Lawless. It's almost the same position that he would use if he were pushing this truck from behind. Vitotis Lalas trying to get to the finish here in the truck pull. Good combination of that power and technique that's so important to this event. Last few meters, can he get there? 45.92, and that sets the early pace in this event, Vitotis Lalas. You can see just how hard these guys have to work to get that 35,200 pound truck down the 25 meter course. The legs and arms are definitely tested. Up next, Johannes Arsho of Sweden. Here in the truck pull. Time to beat 45.92. Set by Vitotis Lalas. Brent, the start is so important, especially when you have 32,500 pounds that you're pulling, and our show had an inflamed left bicep, and you need your arms when you're pulling a big old truck and boat. Slow start, boy, he's getting down and low here, and now he's starting to get some momentum. Momentum is so key because you have to be able to get the truck past this initial inertia, and he takes a tremendous bobble there. That's gonna cost him some precious time. Passing the 10-meter mark. Still going strong, fighting it. Johannes Arsho. Coordination is so important. It's equally as important to use your big arms and biceps as well as keep those legs pumping. He won't get Lawless' time. We'll see where he ends up. Throwing aside the rope and crossing the finish line in 50.21. So Johannes Arsho with that effort goes into second place. You see his arms pumping there, coordination at the very end, he drops the rope. But again, another little slip in a bobble really cost Arsho some precious time. Here's Robert Obers, the American. He's a rookie in World's Strongest Man. Played college football, Western Oregon, former offensive lineman like yourself. Now he pulls 35,000 pound trucks. Well, the same thing it takes to move defensive linemen off the ball, you need to be able to bring 
a truck that weighs 35,000 pounds and 17 and a half tons from a dead standstill stop. You see Robert Oberst there using everything he's got, arms pumping, legs pumping, but not in as much unison and in sync as you'd like to see him. How much does experience factor into an event like this? It's huge, it's crucial. No matter what sport you're in, having some experience in doing things before certainly helps you. And for this young rookie, he's had a tremendous showing here in Sanya. But you have to wonder if his lack of experience in this event, even from a training standpoint, isn't costing him some time. Aaron, tough to simulate pulling a truck around as he gets near the finish, 25 meters. And there, he crosses in 54.98, well off the mark set by Lawless of 45.92. Third place now for Robert Overs. You see his legs pumping as an offensive lineman. That was something he had to do. But to blow guys off the ball, he got to be able to get it done. And Robert did the best he could, but he was pretty blowed out at the end. Brings up Mike Burke here in the truck pull. See what kind of an effort we get from another American here in Burke. Burke's also got a background in semi-professional football. He's from Colorado. The start is so important to the truck pull, Brent. Getting the truck to move past its initial inertia is the most difficult aspect of this race. He's a training partner with Brian Shaw, who really does have all the apparatuses uh, literally in his yard or his warehouse. Well, it certainly appears to be the case because Mike Burke has a nice rhythm. Looks like he's using a little bit more of his legs than his arms and more upright than some of the other competitors that we've seen. Trying to get that time set by Lawless at 45.92. He's close. You see the look on his face there of determination. He's got to finish strong here, Brent. And just in back of Lawless's time, 46.95. That moves Burke into second place here in the truck pull. Pretty strong effort from the Coloradan that trains at high altitude, but we talked about that important start. That was an excellent job by Mr. Burke. Just being around all of these athletes, Brent, you can tell that they have unbelievable respect for what Zadrunas has accomplished. Yeah. I mean, the guy's a machine, just consistent, event after event, year after year. A fourth World Strongest Man title would tie him for second all time. Time to beat 45.92. You see Zadrunas there, little different technique. He started chopping his feet a little bit faster than Lawless did right before him. Zadrunas. Won the world's strongest man in 09, 2010, and last year. And again, trying to beat 45-92. Yes, yeah, Saviscus really excels at all the static lifting events, but here in the truck pool, it requires some coordination. And early on, he seemed to be struggling a little bit in that department, but now he's found his groove. Exploding to the finish. Can you explode with a 35,000-pound truck on your back? Tough to do, but he goes into the lead at 45-81. Zadrunas Zaviskis, impressive as always. And he's your current leader. Great job by Zaviskis, and right through the finish, he really kept his focus. You know he had to be feeling the burn, but he kept his legs pumping on the concrete and his arms yanking on that big old rope. All right, Brian Shaw. Looks fired up. The American was none too pleased with his fifth place finish in the first event, but the truck pull serves as a really good opportunity to rectify that. He's got the advantage, Aaron. He just saw what his main competitor, Zadrunas Zaviskas, just did. Yeah, look at that brute power and strength. It's almost like Brian Shaw starting out in a lower gear, slow and steady out of the gate. Former college basketball player at Black Hill State University in Western South Dakota, the Yellow Jackets. Now remember, Brian Shaw is motivated to win this event, so you can tell he's really giving it his all here now, finding a nice smooth rhythm between his upper body and lower body. 
time to beat 4581 set by Zadrunas Zabiskis. His feet are deliberate when they hit the ground. There is no wobble. He is looking smooth. And Brian Shaw goes into the lead, crushing the time of his arch nemesis, Zadrunas Zabiskis. Yes. And he knows it. 41.23. Yes. There was no let up from Brian Shaw. The American worked from the initial tug on the rope and right across the finish line. A great job by the new leader. Hafthor Bjornsson of Iceland will be appearing in season four of Game of Thrones. But before he starts living the good life, relaxing in trailers between scenes, and riding around town in limos, we're going to have him pull a 35,200 pound truck. Right out of the gate, you see that kind of unorthodox vertical style. He is six foot nine, and right away looks like he's trying to use that upper body leverage and big arms to get this truck going, and he's got some pretty good momentum here early on. Bjornsson, six foot nine. Third appearance in the final. You see him pumping up and down there, Brent. He's really pulling on that rope using his arms. He's almost like a swimmer coming up to take a breath. 41.23 is the time he's trying to beat, set by Brian Shaw. He's going to be close, and he knows he's got to dig deep and fight here, buddy. Afthor Bjornsson to the finish in 40.19, and now he's the new leader in the truck pull. Impressive for the big man from Iceland. No! Woo! You think he's fired up? He's going to be perfect in Hollywood because he knows how to put on a show. He showed some great endurance along with his power to sustain that max effort for the full 25 meters. That brings us to Terry Howlands. The Englishman is competing with a ruptured bicep, but that didn't seem to trouble him too much in the qualifying round. Terry has really been dominant in these huge pulls over the years, but that time of 40.19 put up by Hafthor Bjornsson is going to be awfully tough to beat. Yeah, it is, but remember, Hollins is an old, wily vet, so this is an event that he feels pretty comfortable in. And he mentioned that torn bicep from a year ago. He never had it surgically repaired, but it certainly doesn't seem to be slowing him down in Terry Hollins finished third of the world's strongest man in 07 in 2011, trying to become the first English man to win since 1989. Hollins has found himself a nice rhythm here. Little bottle on the rope there. Trying to beat 40.19. Final few meters. Englishman's digging deep now. Crosses in 42.47. And that puts him in third place. And it also puts him, Aaron, between Brian Shaw and Zadrina Zaviskis, which gives Shaw two more points over Zaviskis in this event. Yeah, you can see that the truck pull really requires a coordination of the entire body. Terry's arms were yanking on that rope while his legs were digging into the concrete like a beast. The final competitor is the USA's Mike Jenkins, who comes into the truck pull following a win in the opening event. Aaron, does Mike's background as an offensive lineman in college help him with the leg drive needed here? No question, hitting those sleds you have to have a good low pad level and good choppy feet to be a good offensive lineman. Those things will both translate well when you're trying to pull 35,000 pounds. So what you're saying is you could step out there right now and pull this truck since you played O-line for the Packers. Are you kidding me? I'll throw my back out playing with my kids' toy trucks. <laughs> Little herky-jerky on his feet. As an offensive lineman, you certainly would want more choppier, powerful feet, and I think Jenkins certainly would like to be moving a little bit more quickly here in this event. 25-meter course, 35,200 pounds, and 40.19 is the time that Jenkins is trying to beat. Now, Jenkins hasn't been feeling well throughout the competition, but you got to admire his heart because there is no quit in this cat. Trying to get to the finish, struggling to the line. Mike Jenkins of the United States, 49.77, and a disappointing seventh place finish in this event. And Brent, that could be a blow to his chances of winning this year's title. So with a time of 40.19 seconds, the truck pull goes into the win column for Hafthor Bjornsson. Brian Shaw is next. 
Terry Holland's third, then it was the Lithuanian duo Zadruna Zaviskis and Bitoktas Lalas taking fourth and fifth, respectively. So the Game of Thrones actor, Hathor Bjornsson, wears the crown as the victor here in the truck bowl, and he's moved up the leaderboard. Bjornsson is on top of the overall standings with a total of 17 points. Hollins is second with 16. Then it's a trio of Americans with Shaw in third place, Mike Burke and Mike Jenkins sharing fourth. Zaviskas, the three-time champion, all the way down in sixth. Through two events, Hathor Bjornsson is looking like a worthy successor to his legendary countrymen, John Paul Sigmarsson and Magnus for Magnuson. Could a championship await the Icelandic giant? We'll find out as the Commerce World's Strongest Man continues in Sanya, China. Welcome back to the city of Sanya, China. The spectacular backdrop for the Commerce World's Strongest Man final. The overwhelming challenges facing the planet's elite strength athletes just keep on coming. The third event is the Super Yoke. Brent, the strong men are going to have to carry a spine-crushing 1,060 pounds on their shoulders. That would turn my spine into an accordion. And actually, carry isn't the right word. They're going to be running with the giant load. That's Mike Burke, the 39-year-old from Colorado. He enters the Super Yoke tied for fourth overall. Pennsylvania's Mike Jenkins also owns a share of fourth place after struggling with an illness in the qualifying round. Jenkins seems to be back at something close to 100%. Ready. See Burke out of the gate pretty quick right away. Jenkins came on strong in the frame carry, and he's doing the same thing here in the super yoke. Seems to be a pretty good technique for him because yes. slow and steady gets it done. Yes. So Mike Jenkins becomes the man to beat in the super yoke with an impressive time of 16.94 seconds. Mike Burke is in second place, at least for the time being, but seven more athletes are still to come. In the faces of Jenkins and Burke pretty much tell the whole story. Carrying over half a ton on the shoulders just causes an immense strain on the human body. Johannes Arshow from Sweden. Ninth overall coming into this event. Take your position. Jenkins has set the pace. Time to beat here in the Super Yoke, 16.94, set by Jenkins. Brent, over a thousand pounds in those barrels. The weight really bears down on an athlete's shoulders. 1,060 pounds here in the Super Yoke. Our show on his own. Anytime you have to stop it, you also expend energy to lift it back up. Our show, even though he's breathing, seems pretty blown out. One final effort he crosses Good. in 29.35 seconds, and that moves Johannes Arsho into third place here in the Super Yoke. Yeah, you're taking a look here at the replay. Anytime these athletes set it down, I can't reiterate enough. It's difficult because of the extra energy it takes to keep moving it forward. So it brings up Robert Oberst, the rookie and world's strongest man. He's eighth overall right now as he struggled in the opening two events. Vitotis Lala, seventh overall coming in. Take. Your position. Time to beat 16.94. Set out there by Mike Jenkins. And right out of the gate, Lawless takes an early advantage. I thought that Oberst, with his background in football, would help him move, but the pure brute raw strength and power of Lawless is putting on a show. What a dominant performance. Wow, crosses in 16.57. Yes. As Oberst. Finishes in 22.16. But Lawless, your new leader here in the Super Yoke. 16.57 seconds. <laughs> and Oberst, yeah. Big old smile for big old OB. Just a rookie, but having a pretty strong showing in his first World's Strongest Man. But this man's no rookie. Lawless showing you that brute strength and power in those big shoulders. Look at that, Brent makes that big old bar seem pretty easy to carry. Right now, Bryant Shaw has the advantage on Zadruna Zaviskas. He's still staring up at two other athletes on the scoreboard after two events. 
Zaviskis, the three-time champion from Lithuania, in sixth place overall. Yeah! I'd say Big Z is ready for this one. Yeah, you think? Now, Brent, these are two of this competition's strongest competitors. I don't think this race is going to take very long. And right out of the gate, Brian Shaw off to a great start. 16.57, the time to beat. Here comes Zaviskis. There's no quitting this kid. Shaw and Zaviskis and Shaw to the line in front and goes into the lead. Zaviskis into second, 14.16 seconds. 13. And Shaw, the overall leader, 13.64 here in the Super Yoke. Grant, both these guys got off to a great start and never had any hesitation, but the former hoopster from Colorado just edged his way out in front and slammed the door on Big Z. Now to the final heat, Iceland's Hafthor Bjornsson, 6'9", 397 pounds of him, is the overall leader. England's Terry Hollins is in second place overall. This is the eighth straight final for Hollins, and he's hoping to end the 20-year title drought for British athletes. These are two of this competition's taller athletes. Let's see how they go right out of the gate. Terry Hollins with a quick start. Look at the herky-jerky wobble with his feet. It's almost like he's wearing swim fins. Time to beat 13.64. Half door looking slow and steady, but Hollins not giving up. Yes. Crossing the line in front is Hollins. And he will finish third in the Super Yoke, 16.51. And sixth place for Bjornsson, 17.77. Crossing the line in 13.64 seconds, Brian Shaw becomes the third different event winner in three events. Zedruna Zaviskis was about a half second off the pace to finish second. Terry Hollins grabbed third place. In fourth, it was Vitoktis Lalas. Mike Jenkins was fifth. Shaw is the new overall leader after three events with 25 points. Hollins has 24 points in second place. Then it's Bjornsson in third. Zaviskis fourth with some of his best events still to come. Expect a challenge from the three-time champ. Poland's Marius Pujanowski is the subject of today's Commerce Flashback. At 6'1", 285 pounds, Pujanowski didn't have prototypical size for a strongman, but pound for pound, no one has produced more power, and no one else has ever been crowned champion five times either. White sand beaches on the shores of the South China Sea make Sanya, China a premier tourist destination, and it's this year's host for the Commerce World's Strongest Man Final. Next up is the fourth of six unique tests of strength, the deadlift, and Aaron, it's a simple task until you consider the gargantuan weight. That's right, Brent. The deadlift is for a one rep max. Heaviest weight wins. The competition began at 815 pounds, and it just keeps going up from there until one man's left standing. John Paul Sigmerson and Magnus for Magnuson each won four World's Strongest Man titles. Hathor Bjornsson hopes to be the next champ from Iceland. Yeah! We know six athletes won't be winning the deadlift since they've been eliminated. Mike Jenkins and Vitoktis Lalas best lift 880 pounds. Hathor Bjornsson successful at 880, now trying 925, but unable to get it. He gets 30 seconds to try, but it looks like he's one and done here. And he'll be a co-leader at 880. Yeah, athletes really have to conserve their power, and Hathor just got the weight up to his shins, but he just couldn't get it any further than that. I guess 925 pounds is heavy. <laughs> I guess so. American Brian Shaw is the overall leader after three events. And Aaron, the big guy from Colorado, is someone who's capable of lifting 925 pounds. Yeah, but remember, he's already lifted 815 and 880 successfully, so we'll see what he has left. Plus, he's 415 pounds himself and can't be too comfortable in the heat and humidity at Sanya. His attempt at 925, and he gets it. Successful lift, and he's the leader, Brian Shaw. Makes it look easy. While Brian Shaw has lifted the trophy one, Cedrita Zaviskis, who we'll see next, has won three times to put him in a tie with Bill Kazmaier. Poland's Marius Pujanowski is the only five-time champ. 
Zydrunas Zaviskis in fourth place overall, trailing Brian Shaw by four points. So the Lithuanian really needs to keep pace with Brian Shaw here in the deadlift, and this attempt will be at 925 pounds to match Shaw. Brent, just a perfectly executed deadlift by Zaviskis. Stab the rolling start, then engage those glutes, hips, back. Just a perfect display of unreal power. This is right in Saviscus's wheelhouse, and he put on a show. He manhandled that. The weight has been added now to 974 pounds. It's come down to Shaw and Zaviscus. Take your grip and lift. Both these guys made 925 pounds look pretty easy, but adding 49 pounds could certainly change things. Here's Shaw's attempt at 974. happy about that Brent watch this bar wobble now this is a standard stiff bar that's eight and a half inches from the floor look at that wobble and look at those big quads quadzilla gets it done Aaron it's the biggest lift we've seen in the history of the world's strongest man and now Zaviskis his turn at 974 to stay alive in this competition and Shaw looks on Two years ago, Zabiscus was successful at 972 pounds, so we know he has this sort of lift in him. He really needs this. Can't get it. Shaw is the winner of the deadlift. Zabiscus settles for second. Zadruna Zaviskis generally owns these static lifts, but not today. Brian Shaw, your deadlift winner. Brian Shaw is the only athlete successful at 974 pounds. Zydrunas Zaviskis picks up second with his good lift at 925 pounds. Hathor Bjornsson, Mike Jenkins, and Vitoktas Lawless all share third. So with 35 points, Shaw continues to sit atop the overall standings. Zaviskis now in second has 30 points. Bjornsson in third place. In fourth, it's Terry Hollins. But this looks likely to end up being another duel between Shaw and Zaviskis for the title. Brian Shaw has stretched his lead to a formidable five points, but he needs to hold off his pursuers, led by three-time champ Zydruna Zaviskis for two more events. We'll return to the Commerce World's Strongest Man in Sanya, China. Welcome back to the Commerce World's Strongest Man Final in Sanya, China. We're at Yalong Bay Cultural Square for the fifth of six events, the overhead medley. And Brent, to complete the event, the strongmen will need to press two dumbbells and two barbells, two different exercises that both are going to tax the shoulders and triceps. The total weight of the four objects is 1,280 pounds. Terry Hollins was in second place overall until suffering a back injury in the deadlift. And then here in the overhead medley, the Englishman couldn't complete the first barbell. Johannes Arsho heading into this event. He's in ninth place. You've got a 243-pound dumbbell, 375-pound barbell, 265-pound dumbbell, 397-pound barbell. And Brent, those dumbbells are a little bit awkward in size. The athletes have to carry them a little bit higher and a little bit further back than you'd want. And how about this? Talk about some big old lollipops, huh? First barbell, 375 pounds, trying to get that grip right. Yeah, he's doing a split grip. When you see the athletes put it on their stomach, that's a continental technique so they can get it up to their chest. Now they explode with their hips, and Arsho should lock it out. Got it. For all that effort, Aaron, he's now halfway through. Yeah, he seemed pretty happy. <laughs> see him there pointing at that 265-pound dumbbell. See, he's thinking about it. <laughs> Trying to psych himself, right? Well, it's a lot harder than it looks, Brent. I mean, these things look cartoonish, but they are very heavy, and our show's running out of time. 
See him holding that left hand there. He's feeling it. Good effort. He got two of them. Two objects in 34.36 seconds for our show. See that hip explosion right there and that effort in locking out. So important to maintain good technique and discipline throughout the lifts. And in the end, just too much on that wrist. Brings up the rookie, Robert Obers, eighth place overall heading into this event. Do the old heave ho to get it up on your shoulder. Watch Robert Obers as he explodes up and gets it locked out. Almost like it's a turkey leg. <laughs> on to the first barbell. Getting his position. Split grip here. Split grip again. A lot of these athletes like it. Watch how heavy this weight is. Watch the back. No See how it vibrates back and forth. That movement makes it even more difficult. It's like picking up a 50-pound child versus a 50-pound weight. When that child's herky-jerky and wiggling makes it a lot tougher, and he's feeling it. The stability that you need to even keep that weight up is proving to be difficult for Overs. Up over his head, he's halfway through. That took a lot out of him, that last one, Brent. The second dumbbell is 265 pounds. 15 seconds. He'll be the leader if he can get this. See Robert with those pink Chuck Taylor high tops on. A tribute to his mother, who's a cancer survivor. This is only his first world strongest man showing. And he's done pretty well, but here he runs out of time. So Oberst checks out, having completed two objects in 47.83 seconds, puts him in second. He talked about the wiggly jigglies. I can't tell you how much strength it takes just to get the bar from stopping, but Oberst has it and locks it out. Brings up Mike Burke of the United States. He's seventh place entering this event. First dumbbell, 243 pounds, no problem. Great hip explosion there for Burke to be able to get it overhead and locked out. Burke here using just a straight traditional overhand grip, still with the continental style. Gets it up, gets it under control. Step, split, lift, locking. Perfect. Hey, you what, I got a feeling based on those first two apparatuses that he's going to get the 265 pounder here. Well, to do it, it's going to take much more of his lower body strength than his upper body. 265, and he gains it, and on to the 397-pound barbell. You can tell cardiovascularly Mike Burke is feeling this. Not only does it take strength, but it also takes endurance. Looking good. Explode and lock out is what he's trying to do. Mike Burke, the new leader. Four objects in 108.17 for Burke. Just a tremendous effort. Look at how much effort it took. Look at his eyes, Brent. That is a man on a mission, and he get her done. He's like He-Man, huh? Holy smokes. On to Vitotis Lalas. He's in sixth place overall. Kind of a pit bull we've mentioned throughout the competition. Raw explosion and power, but the dumbbells in particular also take shoulder flexibility. But Lawless has a pretty good showing on that first one. Makes it look easy. He sprints, hustles over to the first barbell, wasting no time. Assuming he gets all four lifts, time is a factor. So it's important that the athletes not only get these weights up, but get him done quickly, and that's going to cost Lawless a tremendous amount of time. Not just the time, but the effort he expended. He does get it on the second try, and he's at the midway point. Here's the 265-pound dumbbell. Can't do it. Explodes through the legs, but doesn't time it well enough between his lower body and his upper body, and he's going to be finished here, Brent. That extra rep on the barbell cost him dearly. 
what started out looking very good and very speedy turns out to be somewhat of a disappointment for Lalas. So much of this is about rhythm. You see it here by the time he got to the first barbell, he had some strength. But as he continued on, because he had to lift it twice, it took too much out of him. It was good enough to put him in second for the moment. But here's Mike Jenkins. He's fifth overall going in. Again, the time to beat is 108.17, and that would be all four objects. Mike Burke, the only man to accomplish all four so far here in the overhead medley. Nice, great straight press there that time, demonstrating extremely strong shoulder and tricep power. The vibration. Got to get it steady, and he does, and locks it out. That makes it so difficult when that bar is vibrating like that, Brent. Jenkins, the American, 265-pound dumbbell. Got it. Brent, those dumbbells are so heavy, athletes simply don't have the shoulder strength to lift it straight off their shoulders, so they need their legs and explosion to get it moving first so they can get it to a point where they can lock it out. So far, so good for Mike Jenkins, but he really needs this last barbell. 15 seconds, Mike. He's got 15 seconds Finish. to work with. Finish. Not gonna take him. Three objects in a 43.56 seconds moves Jenkins into second place here in the overhead medley. Mike Jenkins has been battling an illness throughout the entire competition, but you can't tell with tremendous efforts like we're seeing here. Brings up half Thor Bjornsson, fourth overall going into this event. Half Thor looking like a full Thor right there. This dude is massive. He will be appearing in the, the upcoming season of Game of Thrones. He looks like he could be a good guy or a bad guy. And sometimes with that show, Aaron, you don't know who's who. <laughs> that's the truth. But right now, it's this dumbbell that's being the bad guy. Hathor Bjornsson has enough strength to get this up, but he's got to use the coordination between his legs and his hips to get it done, and he does it. On to the first barbell. Looks like he's shaking up with that, that left elbow a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he felt it there, buddy. And this probably won't make it feel much better here as it goes with a split grip on the first barbell. That's 375 pounds, Brent. Right there. He's done. Mm, only one object, 24.51 seconds. Sixth place in this event. That all but ends Bjornsson's chances of winning the world's strongest man here in 2013. Yeah, you saw when he's trying to lift that dumbbell up. That left arm, probably the elbow. Next, it'll be Zidruna Zabiskas, the three-time champion from Lithuania. If Zabiskas wants to defend his title, he's got some work to do. He trails Brian Shaw by five points with just the overhead medley and the Atlas Stones left. Well, Brent, we know that Zabiskas is a very good overhead person, and he makes it look easy with that first dumbbell. That one was 243, now 375 on this barbell. Wow, just straight raw overhead pressing power. Most of these athletes will have to use their legs to get it up, but Zabiskas had no problem on that first barbell. 265 on the second dumbbell, and he locks it out. Barbell's not as easy to lift as you might imagine. You have to hold it higher and further back just to be able to hold it and then use your legs to engage. 397 pounds on this barbell. <laughs> he got it. New leader in the overhead medley. Four objects in 43.53 seconds. Yeah, it took Sadruna some time to get that flexible bar under something resembling control but then he muscled it up for the lockout. Big fella was pretty pleased. Brian Shaw, the overall leader, is edging closer to a second world's strongest man title. He can slam the door shut with an outstanding showing right here. The battles between those two and big Brian Shaw with the first big dumbbell, the split step making it look easy. You'll notice here, Brent, 
The athletes will use the continental hang clean where they rest it on their stomach, get it up to their chest, and then use their leg explosion and hips to generate momentum and then their shoulders and triceps to lock it out. Now to the 265 pound dumbbell. Gotta try it again. You have to lock it out at the elbow. Now remember Brent, Brian Shaw told us he was in the best shape of his life coming into this competition. He should be able to get this 265 pound dumbbell. Zadruna set that time of 43.53, so Shaw already gonna finish behind him. There is no quit in Shaw, but he's really struggling with this second barbell. And he checks out two objects in 19.56 for Shaw. So Zadrunas picks up three points in the overall standings based on him finishing first and Brian finishing fourth, and that is big. So Zadrunas Aviscus posts the victory with four objects in 43.53 seconds. Mike Burke, the other athlete to complete all four objects, finishes second. Mike Jenkins, third. Brian Shaw, the fastest to complete two objects, was fourth. The USA's Shaw remains on top of the leaderboard, but his lead has shrunk to just two points. Zaviskis, with a tremendous showing in the overhead medley, has made title number four a possibility. The battle for supremacy and strength athletics will come down to the final event. The last of six challenges is the Atlas Stones. And it's perfect to end things with an examination of overall body strength. To get the five stones from the ground to their platforms is going to take a perfect blend of arms, legs, and upper back. Vitotis Lalas, sixth overall coming into this event. He was the runner-up for the world's strongest man last year, so a bit of a disappointment. There's Mike Burke, he's fifth overall entering the event. Three athletes have already gone in the Atlas Stones, and the current leader is Johannes Arsho of Sweden. Mike Burke, 6'6", and Vitotis Lawless is only 5'10". The lack of height certainly could hurt Lawless on this first platform. Look, he's almost up on his tippy toes, Brent, to get that first stone up. Mike Burke, good size, and that's helping him get the first two. Yeah, but as we go along, Lawless has the brute strength and power to make up some steam, but again, his height really being a factor early on. Time to beat is five stones and 35.27 set by Johannes Arsho. Burke is going to do it! Five stones in 27.16 for Burke. He's the new leader. Meantime, Lawless on his fourth stone. Not only is it lack of height, but it's lack of arm length, Brent. These are round objects that are extremely heavy, so you need big levers to be able to get your hands around them and lift them up. 410-pound stone is up, hands off, and Lawless gets the five stones in 48.80, moves into third. I go home now. But Mike Burke is the story. <laughs> Says he wants to go home now. He's done. 27. Burke, the new leader, Lawless into the third here in the Atlas Stones. Yeah, Lawless not very happy, but Mike Burke is. Tremendous showing by him. You see that little chest bump right there to get the last one up? Whatever it takes, baby. This is the battle for third place. Hathor Bjornsson, the mountain of the man from Iceland, would like to repeat last year's third place finish. Pennsylvania's Mike Jenkins, best result was fifth place in 2012. But you know he'd love to end his time in China with a trip to the podium. Ready. First stone, 285 pounds. Hathor Bjornsson, six foot nine inches, and his height being an immediate advantage over Jenkins. On to the third for Bjornsson. He's up with a 330-pounder. Hathor <laughs> Bjornsson lifting those things up like they're made out of styrofoam. <laughs> 410 to close it out. Bjornsson, hands off at 23.31. Jenkins trying to finish, and there it is. Look at Hathor Bjornsson there. He's massive, and he used all of that height and strength to be able to get those big rocks up. He's the current leader in 23.31. Jenkins got five stones in 31.10. So the overall battle for third between these two guys has yet to be decided. Brent, you'll see here on this 410-pound stone that Bjornsson's shirt sticking to that big round rock. 
Big reason why is because many of these athletes will use a substance called tacky to help them pick up the slippery stones. All right, Brian Shaw is guaranteed to win the world's strongest man title if he beats Zadrunas Sabiscus in the Atlas Stones or if he's no more than one place behind the Lithuanian. Zabiscus facing a tough path to a fourth championship. The last several years, Shaw has been the world's best in this event. Ready? The start is so important, Brent. It looks like Saviscus gets to the platform first, but a slight foul will give Shaw the edge. 310-pound stone, and Shaw has the lead onto the 330-pounder. Tremendous upper thoracic back strength by Shaw on display here. 355-pounder up, one more to go. Shaw has the edge. Saviscus putting in a fight, but it's Shaw that gets his hands off first, Brent. He gets it done. And Brian Shaw is the new world's strongest man. It's the second title for the American. From the USA, Brian Shaw! You like to see this decided head-to-head, -head, Brent. Two ridiculously strong guys, two proud athletes. But in the end, Brian Shaw got his title back. He is the world's strongest man. Hafthor Bjornsson gets his second win in the world's strongest man final, but the real story is what happened beneath him on the scoreboard. Brian Shaw needed to protect a two-point lead, and he did just that. There may be a few more titles in his future, but Brian Shaw secured his second victory with a total of 51 points. That was three points better than Zadrunas Zabiskas. Hafthor Bjornsson edged out Mike Jenkins for third place. Mike Burke ended up in fifth. Now to present the Commerce Cup to the 2013 World's Strongest Man is Lisa Gregorian, member of the Commerce Hotel and Casino Board of Directors. So once again, it's the USA's Brian Shaw who climbs up to the top step of the podium to lay claim to the ultimate title in his sport. He is the World's Strongest Man. Ten supreme athletes face the toughest test of human strength on the planet. But it was Brian Shaw who outlasted them all to become the Commerce World's Strongest Man for a second time. For Aaron Taylor, I'm Brent Stover. So long from Sanya, China.